think that potters have to find the clay they like. That some potters are stoneware potters, and some potters like smooth clay. Some people like low fire, and I never worry about you know not selling a pot or that I ought to be making the pot that somebody else is making because these are the pots that I really like to make. This is the clay I really like. When I first threw, well actually I first threw porcelain, which this is. Very hard clay to throw, ornery, dries fast, cracks. So this is my favorite part, throwing. A lot of grunt work. There's recycling clay. There's a lot of time spent decorating. I'm probably known best for my decoration, but um, this is the stage I like the very best. This is to me the most creative part. I like to think about form. I work in cycles. Like if I were making teapots, I would make a series of them, and each one during the day would probably get a little bit better. Um, it used to be I would have to sort of work up to that, but then I'll get through a cycle of maybe making five teapots, you know, make them one day, put them together, and then, you know, I get them through the firing and the glazing, and I'm thinking about how I'm going to go glaze them when I'm making them. But then it's over. I'm on thinking about the next teapot I'm going to make. So it just keeps going, and it's just endless. It's like I never get bored. I came to New Mexico to be a truck farmer. I had uh, wanted to spend some time just growing vegetables for local farmers markets. And I was doing that when I, when I first came to Ojo Sarco, which has been now about 28 years ago. And Kathy and I met here. I uh, started helping her just with the heavy work in the pottery. I uh, started loading kilns and mixing glazes and do, doing some of that work while I was still thought of myself as a farmer. I just gradually became more and more involved and we developed a, um, a line of hand-built and slab pieces that, uh, that is pretty much what I do uh, and sort of complements Kathy's wheel thrown work. The trick to this is going with the clay and not fighting it. The, the clay wants to do something and you can influence it, but you can't really contradict it. You have to figure out where it wants to go and just kind of help it get there. Over the years of all this hard work, I've developed a whole series of calluses on my hands that it's not, my biggest challenge is to keep from making these little dents all over the pot with the calluses on the palms of my hands. You can work in shapes that aren't round by nature and yet you still can make it become kind of a something with some depth and some shape to it. There it is. It hasn't been a financially great living, but it's been a great living. I feel really lucky. At this point, too, most of the time we can pretty much make what we want. Um, we sell to a few galleries. We mostly sell out of here. And those galleries understand that we don't really want orders. We want to make what we're making. Because they're going to get the best work that way. And if they tell me to make a yellow pot with 
pink dots. It looks like a water can. I'm not going to do a good job. <laughs> been making pots like this for hundreds, thousands of years. But um, there's something very universal about that. And this one, when I glaze it, it'll be fun. I can really make it, make it flow and fluid. And um, my early years, I couldn't glaze a pot and make it fluid. They were static. And it just takes lots and lots of brushing and over and over and over. And that's the thing, because people go, oh, um, production potters, they do it over and over and over again. But boy, that's what makes you good. That's what makes you fluid. I mean, it's not even just good, but that you can just do it without thinking or it goes with the music or whatever. So I think it's fine that I make a lot of pots. I get better with every one. <laughs>